Hi, my name is Max and I'm a developer with IBM MQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can visualize and control your entire messaging infrastructure from your web browser. We're going to use something called the MQ console, which is basically a way that you can see and configure your messaging objects. So that's really useful because it means we have control over our queues, over our channels, over our subscriptions, if we're doing published subscribe messaging, and even the messages themselves. That's really good for us as developers because it means we get to test our code and check that everything works the way we expect it to. For this example, I'm going to use MQ inside of a container, which I set up in the video here, if you want to follow along. Now, it's a good idea to use MQ in a container because it comes with a developer configuration, which means basically when we get to the console, we already have some objects we can play with. If you don't have MQ in a container, if you're running somewhere else, then that's completely fine because we actually support the MQ console with every single platform of MQ. So if you're running in the cloud, in Linux, on Windows, on the mainframe, or even on a Raspberry Pi, we actually do have the console for all of those platforms. So if you're not using a container, then there's a link in the description to help you get started to set up the MQ console. After that, come back here and we'll show you what you can do with that. And for right now, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to just show you is that I've got MQ running inside a Docker container. So if I type Docker PS, we're going to see there that I'm running a container with the latest MQ image. That's all we have to do here. And now what we're going to do is go to our browser and access the console. We can see here that I've exposed the port 9443. And that is actually the port we're going to use to access the console from the browser. So we're going to go to this address. So that's HTTPS, and it does have to be HTTPS. Then it's localhost because we're running our container locally. Then it's port 9443, which is the console port. Then it's the address IBM MQ slash console. So let's go over there now and see what we can do. Okay, so I've got my web browser open, and if I enter this address, I expect to see, when I hit enter, that I'll get a browser warning. There we go. So the reason I'm seeing that is because as part of the developer configuration that you get for free with installing the MQ in containers image, you actually have a self-signed certificate inside of that container that's presented to your browser. So the browser obviously doesn't know to trust that, but we know we can because it's come from the inside of that container. And in this specific case, we're okay to click advanced and accept that risk and continue because it will take us to the sign-in page. So when I get to this page, we can see that there are some credentials here and they've been pre-filled for me, but here are the credentials. So um, if you're using a container, then the username will be admin and the password will be this password here. You can change those, but that's the default that we've set for the developer configuration. So when I hit enter, it will log me in and we'll be able to see the console. So here we are inside the console and we can see that we've got some panels here. We've got the first layer of panels, which is how you do stuff with MQ. It's um, some quick shortcuts to get things done. And then the second set, the second layer here is all of the MQ educational stuff. So our materials for understanding the basics of MQ. But what we want to do right now is have a look at the manage tab, which we can get to from this panel or from the tab here. And that will show us our running queue managers. So I can see here that I've got a queue manager, which is our MQ server, and it's called QM1. Now that's cool because inside of here, we can see we've got queues, topics, subscriptions, and communications. So the queues are the queues that messages can get put onto. We'll look at those in a second. We've got topics and subscriptions, which is how MQ does publish subscribe messaging. So if you're interested in pub sub messaging, that's the way to go. Uh, we've also got communications. So this is our listeners. So um, these listeners are listening out for connections. And we've got queue manager channels, which are used for connecting to multiple queue managers, which we won't need right now. And we've got app channels, which are basically the way that we can connect to MQ. So we've got a channel here for applications to put messages. And we've also got a channel here for administration, which is actually the channel we're using right now inside our browser to connect to the console. So if I go back to the queues tab, I can see here that I've got a list of queues. So I've got dev q1, dev q2, dev q3, and a dead letter queue. But we're just going to focus on dev q1 right now and click on that. Because when I do, I can see more properties. So I can see actually this is where my messages will be displayed. I don't have any messages right now, but if I hit create, this create button here, I will be able to type in a message and put it as a test message onto the queue to check that MQ is working and can receive messages from my web browser. So if I type in a message, I'll just type hello world. There we go. And I will hit create. And that will put that message onto the queue inside of my MQ installation inside my container. 
So I can see here it was put by the console, that's the application ID, and we can see the data here, hello world. If I click on this message, I can actually see lots of properties of this message as well as the application data. So there's more than just hello world in this message. There's a lot of intelligent stuff that MQ is going to use to do smart stuff to the messages and also stuff that we can use to our advantage when we write our own applications. If I don't like this message or if I want to clear my messages, I just go to this garbage can icon, which is here, and I hit clear queue and that will remove all of the messages. So again, if you're developing something, you've put lots of test messages, that's a really good way to just quickly wipe those messages off so you can start again. Finally, there's an actions tab up here in the top right. And if I click on that, I can see that I can delete my queue, but I can also view the configuration of the queue. And I can, as well as viewing it, actually edit that configuration. So I can change properties of this queue. So I can change, for example, if someone is allowed to put a message or get a message from this queue. I can also do things like change the queue depth, which is the amount of messages that you can have on a queue at any one time. Now, when I've done that, when I've made any changes, I hit save, but I haven't, so I'm gonna hit cancel. So if I'm done here and I've changed my queues and I've looked at my queue managers and I've done all my fun stuff I need to do, I can just click on the IBM MQ icon here, this tab here, and that will bring me back to the main page. So I can see here, I've got all these options, but I want to draw your attention to this uh, bottom right option, which is learn MQ. It'll actually take you to a place where you can do an MQ qualification for free and show that off on your social media, but also more importantly, actually start writing applications and developing some stuff with MQ. So if that's interesting to you, please do have a look and I'm sure you'll have a good time. Either way, thanks for watching. I really hope this has been helpful for you. If there's anything else you want to see, please let us know in the comments. Leave us a like if this video was helpful for you. And again, please reach out to us and let us know what your thoughts are. All right, cheers. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.